Hi you guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with my questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review books, review courses, videos, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on boards as well as in practice. I have been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success, and I would love to assist you as well if needed. But as always, you know, I like to get into my disclaimer and reminder that there's no absolute in medicine. Y'all know we treat on a patient by patient basis. Many of the questions that you see I have designed and created based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. And anything that I am doing videos on that teach about things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, a mother brings in her three-year-old daughter with complaints of a fever and not feeling well. The nurse practitioner notes a strawberry tongue on exam. Based on presentation, what is the best differential diagnosis? Is it A, roseola, B, rubella? C, Kawasaki disease, or D, rubiola. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, you guys, so you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first, so it allows you to slow down and to ensure that you're answering what is even being asked. So here, the stem of the question states, based on presentation, what is the best differential diagnosis? So this patient is brought in by the mother, three-year-old little girl, with complaints of a fever and just generally not feeling well. The nurse practitioner notes a strawberry tongue on exam. Now, this is one of those things that I always say, like when I say this, you say that, right? So if I say strawberry tongue, you should think Kawasaki disease. So the best differential here is C, Kawasaki disease. And if you go through A, B, and D on their common um, presentation, you should be able to eliminate majority of these. Remembering like roseola is six disease. Um, rubella, they'll have macular papillar rash that starts from their face and then goes down to their trunk. So you should be able to eliminate these other answer choices, right? All right, so question number two, the nurse practitioner has Kawasaki disease as a differential diagnosis. What gold standard diagnostic exam should be completed? Is it A, a CBC, B, an echo, C, a chest x-ray, or D, a sputum culture? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, so stem of the question states, what gold standard diagnostic exam should be completed? So remember, with Kawasaki disease, you want to make sure that you do B, obtain an echo, because vasculitis is a um, common issue that we want to rule out and um, stay on top of when you have a Kawasaki diagnosis, okay? So make sure you get your echoes. B is your answer. And then lastly, question number three, the nurse practitioner is reviewing the echo results and planning treatment. What is the best treatment option for Kawasaki disease? Is it A, aspirin and amoxicillin, B, aspirin and IVIG, C, amoxicillin, or D, augmentin? Take a moment and tell me what you got, you guys. All right, so stem of the question states, what is the best treatment option for Kawasaki disease? Now, for Kawasaki disease, we treat with aspirin and IVIG. Just like I was speaking of the importance of getting an echo because vasculitis is something that is um, a huge issue that you want to make sure that you stay on top of with this. But um, aspirin can help for that symptomatic management and its anti-inflammatory um, benefits as well. But also, we use that IVIG to prevent that coronary artery damage and to help reduce that, the, the levels of inflammation in the tissues um, with the vasculitis that we worry about. So remember, for um, Kawasaki disease, we best treat with B, aspirin, and IVIG. All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I tried to do this in a fashion of presentation, how you were going to identify your uh, Kawasaki disease those diagnostic tools that you need to utilize in treatment. I hope you're beginning to start tying these things together and the more and more that we do these. So again, I hope you found it, you're finding these helpful. 
But as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. If you need any of the resources that I offer, my review book, ebook, and paperback option are linked in the bio of this channel. Um, my self-paced review course that is designed for family and adult general preparing for the AAMP as well as ANCC exam is also linked in the bio of this channel. Um, I do periodic group courses for a five-week intensive review. The next one is actually starting on Monday, so be on the lookout for the one that's coming up after that. And then lastly is one-on-one -on -one sessions. You know, these are customized based on where you need either your weaknesses, your exam readiness assessment, or um, doing a custom plan. So just give the nursing studio a call at 803-400-6864 or shoot us a text message to that number. Or you can also shoot us an email at the nursing studio one at gmail.com. And again, that email is the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. All right. But as always, you guys, make sure you meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.